How's it going, everyone? Badger here. And, you know, I wasn't going to review this movie. I wasn't going to watch it, at least not until it came out on streaming. But I had a good friend, wanted to see it. And I said, hey, you know what? Fine. Let's go. A way I can give it a fair review. And I can see if it's good or bad, you know, despite, I think, a lot of biased opinions for multiple reasons. Mainly two reasons. James Gunn and Amber Heard. But before I get into it, here's what I think. If this movie had come out without any Amber Heard controversies, that had never happened. And if James Gunn had never said that this is doesn't count basically because he's rebooting it, and this had just come out as the sequel to Aquaman when it was supposed to come out and not been delayed, it would be an easy billion dollar film. This is a good movie. This is as soon as it ended, I was like, this is an eight out of ten. And so now in fairness, because I'm going to criticize some of the parts in the beginning and the end, I'll say the entire movie is probably a solid seven out of ten. But the parts of what I was hoping would be good, and one of the reasons I wanted to go, the Jason Momoa, Patrick Wilson relationship is a lethal weapon, buddy cop, bro, comedy versus straight man, classic archetype action movie, and I'm here for 48 hours. Pick one, pick one, because that is the same vein, and I'm here for it. It is a good movie, all right? I'm sorry if you don't like James Gunn. I'm not a fan either. I'm sorry if you don't like Amber Heard, I, I, but guess what? Put them aside. Put that bias away for a moment. It's a good fucking movie. It's a good fucking movie. I and it's a shame. And you can see a lot of it was edited to hell. And you could Amber, Amber. I wish they had either just fired because she's in the movie, but she's in it enough that it's distracting that she's not talking and that she's not there more at crucial moments because well you have her in it. So they should have just either fired her and not been in it or recast her. Because it, it sort of ruins, there's a lot of great story elements, and everyone got nice wrap ups. And the only negative was the Amber Heard. And not because it was Amber Heard, but because the character we see, she was playing just felt shallow. And not because of her acting, like just legitimately the character wasn't in it. You could tell they edited her out and they cut her lines down. And I wish they had just committed one way or the other, because the negatives to the film are that. All the rest of it, look, I know a lot of people are talking and they're gonna talk about the plot, like the logic of the plot. If this were any other movie, I would agree with you. Like, if this were a regular movie or even a science fiction, this is a comic book movie. And James Wan knows it's a comic book movie. Heavily relies on it in some of his plot MacGuffins. And, uh, but it to me, it, it worked. If you just take it for what it is, it worked. There was some great... It worked enough that I don't even want to spoil some of the endings, even though if you can probably guess some of the resolutions. But love Patrick Wilson's character. Love the interactions between him and... Uh, here, I should... I had this playing so we could uh, you can go through just the beats of the movie. So let's do that. It opens with Aquaman. He's recounting just what where we were at the end of the last movie. And he's now king of Atlantis. And he's when he's not king of Atlantis, being a single father, he's out in the seas uh, beating up pirates. And this is sort of revealed that he's actually he's actually telling this story to his son. So he's now married to Mara. He has a son. Uh, he's teaching a look Maori. The, the, tribal dances and hakas and so he's trying to balance his work life and his human life with being the king of atlantis and it's you know things are going things are going uh he's enjoying it uh this is where it feels disjointed because oftentimes yes they have the baby pee in his mouth twice that was the other one is he dodges it the second time in a scene later on and mara who's actually in it uses her water bending to bend the piss right into his mouth oh it was a funny little but again all those negatives are that that's just humor that doesn't always land so he spends most of his time being a quote unquote single dad, even though he's married and she's there. And I guess I just excused it as well. She's back in Atlantis and they're they're taking turns, uh, you know, dealing with the political stuff there. Tamir Morrison, great. He had a great character art to the whole film. And I hope Guinness is sponsored because boy, did they drink a lot of it. Uh, I don't drink myself anymore because the badger got a little wild for there for a while there. But boy, did it make me want to appreciate a nice Guinness. And I don't even like Guinness. It tastes like mud. So that should explain to you how much they're drinking Guinness in this movie. But uh, yeah, no, Tamura was good. Uh, a little weird here than when, uh, when they get the basic plot also of the movie is essentially this black Manta has been obsessed with Aquaman since Aquaman failed to save uh, the predicament that black Manta and his father put themselves in by being pirates. So he's spending all his time trying to kill Aquaman and get his revenge. He ends up finding basically a magical staff that has key, you know, ties to a lost kingdom and a power source called Auriculum. 
and this is a very magical lore like this is where the comic book just don't try to understand it because it's a fossil fuel it's a fossil fuel but it also mutates plant and animal life but it could also be used to create a staff to make yourself a fucking zombie and all your people zombie look 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 just come for it for the jason momoa dude bro and the patrick wilson buddy cop dynamic and and you won't be disappointed and and yes he does uh, abdul i believe his first name is uh, yeah yaha abdul Madin the second he does a very good job as a black man to, uh, you know, you believe him. He basically gets possessed by this this uh, trident, which we find out is uh, belonging to Kordax, the king of a lost kingdom. Dun, dun, dun. He said the title name. So, yeah, there's a huge action scene here where Black Manta has to go into Atlantis to get the last remaining bit of this fossil fuel. By the way, yes, the entire movie is a fucking analogy for global warming and industrialization. You just sort of have to let it go off you. Oddly enough, like water off a duck's back. You just just don't think about it too much. They live in the water. Of course, they're going to have a bias for clean water. So you know, just 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 take it for what it is. But they're getting the last bit of this fuel, basically, this green, glowing, very obviously bad, evil fuel. They have to break into Atlantis to do this. It leads to a whole action scene where Mara is hurt. And for some reason, they're all riding on these weird uh, robotic uh, sharks uh, instead of uh, instead of that doing the diet. Because only men have to work out for this. Remember, body positivity for women. But men have to starve themselves, not have water for three days so they can get this shot. My dude could probably smell a droplet of water on the set. Henry Cavill said he could smell water towards the end. He was so dehydrated on the set of The Witcher. Funny little anecdote. Anyway, so once he does this, he he breaks in. Everyone gets messed up, and they have to chase after him. They, you know, uh, what the hell does Aquaman know about? Uh, what does Arthur know about Black Manta? So he goes to who does know about Black Manta, and that is his brother Orm, who we find out since the last movie is being held prisoner by the fish people who for some reason have an underground prison in the Sahara desert. Don't think about it too much. It's a comic book movie and it looks cool. So he's guarded and Arthur has to use the stealth suit. And here's the, the, the sand demons that work for the fish people that are torturing Orm. He's getting the Baghdad treatment. The, the little, uh, the Abu grave special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they actually did some really cool CGI with him where they gave like the Steve Rogers emaciated look because he's being starved of water. And so, of course, then he goes into the water and he gets all super big. It's a great fight scene. I, Patrick Wilson was my favorite character. Orm, Ocean Master. Favorite character. Whole movie. Again, I'm totally here. I bought into the whole thing. I love their dynamic. Um, I know Ryan from Arc Outpost. He was over it. And that's one of those. I was like, bro, because you don't like him as Aquaman. And you, of course. So if you if you didn't like it originally, definitely I'm not going to like it here. But if you did like it originally, I, I'd, I'd wager to say you're going to love this. We end up coming that the uh, coming to find out basically that Black Manta, Black Manta needs the blood of uh, this bloodline, the Arthur Arthurian bloodline, and they do that by kidnapping Arthur's son. He attacks, and oh, it's very dangerous and scary. Suit looks dope. He spends most of the first part of the movie trying to reassemble. That's in a quest to rebuild his suit is how he finds news of this this lost kingdom, and he gets his all this technology that is conveniently still working there and is still working after all this time and just sits there and no one took it. Don't think about it too much. It's a comic book movie. But again, the before this is one of the rare ones where the performances shine through. I know people said that uh, it felt like Jason Momoa was phoning it in. I mean, maybe during the beginning, like the, the Amber scenes, yeah, and like the, the exposition where he's telling shit to people. But in all the scenes with him and Patrick Wilson, nah, Homeboy brought his A game. It was good. I, I Look, Got a tear out of me at the very end between him and his brother at a very endearing moment. James Wan remembered a bunch of character moments from the first one. I enjoyed it. I, if you like Jason Momoa's Aquaman, I am recommending that you go out and see Aquaman. There is a reason it's the number one DC movie. Even if it's going to lose money, that is not because it's a bad movie. That is because of all the bad talk. Because everyone knows the universe is going forward. Because the other three DC movies were shitty. And so they're expecting this one to be. And quite frankly... With the fact that it has been delayed for so many times and re-edited so many times and so many cameos cut out to follow the continued fuckery of the executives and whatever vision it's supposed to line up with, in that context, it's a 10 out of 10. So 7 out of 10 with the reality of everything. But holy shit, I 
could only imagine what this movie could have been if it had come out when it was supposed to. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, this was definitely a surprise for me. And if nothing else, I really, really appreciated Patrick Wilson and Jason Momoa in this movie. On to go do Lobo and reset. And uh, quite frankly, after this, this is how Aquaman should be. Patrick Wilson character, when he lightens up and starts joking around towards the very end and has like a personality, is how Aquaman should be. Hire this motherfucker for the DC Universe gun. Get on it. Ugh. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. If you've done that, thank you. If you're going to do that, thank you. And uh, go see Aquaman. Go see Aquaman. We'll see you on the next one.